Hello, welcome and thanks for watching this mini gem or geriatrics e-learning mo module brought to you by AMI, the Association for Elderly Medicine Education. My name is Mark Garside and I'm going to present this five minute guide to stroke thrombolysis. Now, due to time constraints, I'm only going to focus on current accepted evidence-based practice in the UK and this presentation is mainly aimed at non-specialist staff working in the NHS. So here are the learning outcomes for this mini gem. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about the background and principles um, behind stroke thrombolysis and what it involves. Um, then talk about how to perform a focused assessment of a patient in order to facilitate rapid investigation and treatment. So the main message that I want you to take away is that stroke is a medical emergency and that time is brain. So it's been estimated that for every minute that goes by when somebody's having a stroke, nearly two million neurons or brain cells are lost. Uh, and the clinical relevance of this is that the damage is cumulative and the sooner you intervene, the better chance you have of minimising the, the, the damage and the clinical impact for the patient. So thrombolysis itself is a treatment for ischemic stroke, the idea being that if you can lyse or break down the offending blood clot and restore cerebral perfusion, then you can minimise the amount of damage done to the brain and in some cases restore function. As it's a blood thinning treatment, the main risk is of bleeding uh, and ischemic or infarcted brain is particularly susceptible to this. However, statistically, the chance of um, bleeding is outweighed by the chance of uh, benefit from the treatment. It's important to remember that stroke is a clinical diagnosis, not a radiological one. So often if you scan somebody in the early stages of uh, an ischemic stroke, you'll see a relatively normal looking scan. Uh, on the right hand side of the screen here you can see a, a scan of somebody who's had a large infarct. This is what we're trying to prevent with the treatment uh, and if you see this it means that that area of brain is unsalvageable and the patient isn't going to get any benefit from the treatment. So the only medication currently licensed for the treatment of acute stroke is Alteplase which is a recombinant tissue plasminogen activator. Um, we give it at a dose of 0.9 milligrams per kilogram via IV infusion over one hour. And it's important that when somebody's getting the treatment that they're monitored very closely for any signs of physiological or neurological change in an appropriate environment which is quite often an acute stroke unit but before we get to that stage you need to think about whether the patient's having a stroke so remember that stroke is a vascular event in the brain and as such the onset of symptoms will be sudden you can use any screening tools that you might know such as fast or rosier but remember that depending on the vascular uh, territory that's been affected um, and the fact that the different areas of brain have different functions, the symptoms can vary and they can be mixed. It's also important to consider stroke mimics, particularly seizures, sepsis, syncope and hypoglycemia. In particular, remember to check the BM. One of the most important things to try and determine is when the symptoms started. So after the onset of symptoms, we have four and a half hours um, to give somebody thrombolysis treatment but as we said at the beginning time is brain and within that four and a half hour window the sooner you give the treatment the better chance it has of working. Um, if it's difficult to, to determine when the symptoms started you have to um, backdate them to the last time the person was definitely known to be well. So these are the things that need to happen before somebody gets thrombolysis treatment. They need to have some blood tests done and they need to have the CT scan done. The blood tests and the CT images need to be looked at by a specialist who's qualified to recommend uh, treatments or make decisions regarding thrombolysis. And then finally the treatment has to be given. So you see there's quite a few steps that have to happen within a relatively short space of time. In order to help all this process run smoothly, um, there are a few things that you can do. It's important to get senior support involved early, particularly the stroke specialist team. They might be on site or they might be providing input via telemedicine, but either way, it's going to require a little bit of notice for them to, uh, to get involved with the patient. Um, similarly, pre-alerting the CT room, either the radiographers or the radiologists, that a scan is going to be needed um, will often make it happen faster. Make sure that a patient has a set of up-to-date observations and think about the weight early because thrombolysis, um, the do in thrombolysis the dose is weight dependent. Um, you also need to think about the contraindications to treatment and with that in mind helpful things to ask include um, any race, recent major, major surgery or major bleeding, uh, any anticoagulant use, but I should say that being on warfarin isn't itself an absolute contraindication but rather we go off the INR so it's important to make sure that a coagulation screen has been checked and whether they've had any recent stroke. Um, similarly, any um, intracerebral hemorrhage at any time uh, is usually considered a contraindication. It's also important to think about the most appropriate place of care for these patients, which is often an acute stroke unit. 
Stroke units have been shown to improve mortality and morbidity for all stroke patients, not just those undergoing thrombolysis. And as such, in the NHS, there are targets to hit regarding how quickly patients with a stroke can be transferred to a recognised stroke unit. That's all I have time to tell you about in this mini gem. Here are our learning outcomes, so hopefully now you've either learnt or revised something about the basics of stroke thrombolysis, including how to prov uh, perform a focused assessment and investigate and treat patients with acute stroke. As a further resource, I can recommend the e-learning modules uh, from NHS, NHS Scotland, which are available at strokecorecompetencies.org. Um, strokesim.nhs.uk contains more information about a simulation-based stroke and TIA assessment training programme. And the Royal College of Physicians website contains um, the latest national stroke guidelines. That's all. Thank you very much for watching this mini gem. And on behalf of the Association for Elderly Medicine Education, um, see you next time.